are like three, four, five hundred dollars, that's not going to really help the business as a speaking industry in general. And especially my folks who are doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work, there's so much emotional labor that goes into that. So we don't want to continue to burn ourselves out just because we have an opportunity. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Speaking for Profit podcast. And today we are talking about strategic negotiation tips for speakers and consultants. If you are watching live, just go ahead and put hashtag live in the comments. If you're watching in the near and dear future, put hashtag replay. And I'm really excited about this conversation because I know that as we move into a new year, there's going to be new money, right? As we move into a new year, there is going to be new money. And what's great about negotiation is it gives you an opportunity to flex some of your skills and to really have conversations with decision makers that allow you to take your brand and your business to the next level. So I'm extremely excited and thankful to get into this conversation with you all and to talk about some strategic tips for speakers and consultants who are looking to negotiate larger contracts as we move into 2024. The reason I wanted to have this discussion with you all as well is because I know that you have seen the news. You've seen the economy, people talking about how things are getting tighter, how organizations are cutting their budgets, they're laying off people. So what that what that tends to do is it can create anxiety for speakers and consultants. It can create anxiety where you feel like you're not doing enough and potentially you're not going to get paid what you've normally been paid because people don't have the money. But what I want to be here to say is to kind of push past that narrative and say that the money is there. The money is there for you. The money is there for your business and organizations still have a budget for professional development. Now, what I will say is that it's going to be more and more important for you to stand out and for people to really know who you are and how to support you and your business. So let's talk about negotiation strategies that you can use as a speaker and a consultant. And I'm going to give you three of them. And then I want to give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about how you can really prepare yourself for the new year and make sure that your business is set up as profitable as possible. So the first thing that you can do as a negotiation strategy is really understanding your value and unique selling proposition. And we call that that USP, understanding your value and unique selling proposition. And what I mean by that is really knowing what sets you apart from other speakers and consultants. This could be your expertise in your niche, your experience, perhaps your network, or your ability to deliver exceptional results and clearly articulate your USP, your unique selling proposition. So I'm going to share an example with you. When I was living in the Bay Area, shouts out to anyone in California, all my California folks, I was working at my nine to five as an equity and inclusion program manager. But before I even got into that role, I was assistant director at a multicultural and LGBT center on my college campus, which was one of the top medical schools in the country. And I would utilize the fact that I was connected to a government organization that had years of experience supporting the policy inclusivity of LGBT folks as a unique selling proposition to organizations that wanted to bring me in to support them with their LGBT inclusion work, right? So I would let them know about my nine to five and the work that I had been doing for over a decade and how my organization had been doing this since the early 1990s to let them know that I come from that level of experience. That allowed me to negotiate some higher opportunities, higher paid opportunities, and also negotiate some stronger relationships because I was able to build trust. So I wanna bring this up because I know many of you are are asking me questions, especially in Messenger, even an email about what about my nine to five? How do I separate my nine to five from my business? And sometimes a unique selling proposition is to not separate, but to really empower the credibility that you have from your business and from your nine to five, because you've had the opportunity to really build that expertise in your field because of your positionality at that organization. 
So you want to understand what is your value? What's your unique selling proposition? What's your USP? And, and I love um, Tiffany Aliche, who's the budgetista. She always says, what's your Oprah, right? What's your Oprah? What's the thing that people are going to really want to build, bring you in to speak or consult because of your own credibility that you have? And many of you have years of experience that you can already tailor and know about. But when we're going into a negotiation room, we've got to know that because Oftentimes when you're in a space and people are asking you, how much do you pay? How much do I have to need to pay you? What's your fee? They're just trying to get a sense of it based off of their budget. But before we even get into that conversation, when people start to get really about me about the fees and the payments, I want to tell them a story. I want to sell them. So I'm like, you know what? I do want to talk about the rate. I do want to talk about the fee. But before we talk about that, I want to have an understanding of you and your organization and how I can support you and talk a little bit more about the experience that I have as an expert and give me myself time to share my stories and my own unique selling proposition. So if that's helpful for you, going to put the word money into the comments just so I can know that, because I think that this is something that's particularly special. And so many of us have experience, whether it's in our nine to five other organizations that we've worked with that we can bring up. Let's get into the second negotiation tip and strategy for speakers and consultants. The second one is to research your client and the event you're going to be speaking at. Quite often when you're being asked to speak at an event, it's not the first time the organization has had the event. They probably had it last year or maybe the year before. They might even have the event quarterly. So understanding the client's budget, the scope of work, the project, and what they aim to achieve by hiring you as a speaker and as a consultant is really important. When you get on a discovery call with a potential client, you want to know the when, why, and the how. (laughs) When is the event? Why are they hosting it? And how are they funding it? And I'm very, very clear with folks about what is their budget and what is their expectation because quite often someone will say, hey, you know what? We got an event budget that's $5,000 and that's the event budget. That includes food, that includes everything. And I have to be honest with them when, when that doesn't fit my budget as a speaker and a consultant. So you can avoid wasting a lot of time for you and that organization by doing your research. And this knowledge can guide your pricing and your negotiation strategy, right? So I actually have a question that I've put on my Calendly when organizations or decision makers sign up to speak to me about speaking or consulting at an event that asks them about their budget. Because when we do get on a call, And they're saying, hey, Bob, I want you to come speak and hold a workshop and table and do all this different stuff. But the budget doesn't quite meet what their expectations are. I'm able to have that conversation with them and we're able to have clarity around what type of expectations they can have and what type of expectations I can have. So don't be afraid to ask people what their budget is, what the money is, because that allows you to tailor and create an experience that's really going to be able to support them without overworking yourself or burning yourself out. So for folks who are just joining us, just go on and put the word hashtag live in the comments. Let us know where you're joining us from. Today, we are talking about negotiation tips and strategies for speakers and consultants to have the most profitable success. And I'm gonna move on to the third one, but before I move on to our next strategy, I wanna talk to you all a little bit about how to prepare for 2024 and really monetize your message. Monetizing your message can look like um, many different things, but what we're focusing on supporting people with at Speaking for Profit University is how to monetize your message when it comes to being a speaker, a consultant, or someone who creates digital products that share your expertise, right? Those are the three ways that we make money as speakers. We either have a digital product or maybe it's a recording of ourselves. We go on and do a one-off opportunity, or we might even have an opportunity to be put on retainer from from an organization because we have an expertise. So what I've been doing the last few months is running an amazing five-day challenge where I walk you through the process of putting together this business plan so that you can build a profitable and sustainable speaking and consulting business, get on stages around the world, impact the world with your voice, your narrative, your expertise. And this five-day challenge is a great way to get started with some amazing coaching from me and some strategies before the new year so that you start the new year off with a plan. 
quite often what I hear from folks, and I put, I put a post up recently, what's your goal for your speaking consulting business in 2024? And a lot of people put that they were just praying and hoping. And instead of praying and hoping, I want you to pray. I want you to hope. But instead of just doing that, I want you to have a strategic plan and a system that you're going to follow. So I am going to be hosting the five days to five figure speaking gigs challenge on December 11th. And this will give you an opportunity to be in space with me, to learn from me, to learn these strategies so that you have a plan at the top of the year. You don't just have a hope and a prayer and not saying that hope and a prayer is not going to get you there, but you've got to get into action to be able to take your business to the next level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and share that link with you. Here it is. Just go over to speakingforprofit.com slash five day challenge. And that's going to take you right to the page to get more information on that challenge. It is starting December 11th. It actually will start December 10th with our pregame session where you'll learn a little bit more about how to get the most out of the challenge. But from December 11th through December 15th, we're going to meet an hour every day to talk about you, your business, and how to make sure that you make 2024 the most profitable year in your business yet. Every day we're going to meet for an hour. You also have an opportunity to sign up for VIP if you want to do that. And that's an additional hour of coaching with me on Zoom. So that could be two hours of coaching. To sign up for the challenge, it's $47. And if you want to get into VIP, it's an additional $50. So the total is $97. But you can get into general admission today, get signed up and get ready to monetize your message and to really be in a space where you're able to build a profitable and sustainable business through your expertise, through your voice, through sharing your story with the world, right? So meet me there at that five days to five figure speaking gigs challenge. I'm really excited to partner with you all and to support you all as we move into the new year. Attention public speakers, coaches, and consultants ever dreamt of booking five figure speaking and consulting contracts? In just five days, I'm teaching my tried and tested system to elevate your speaking and consulting business. Forget the cold emails, bypass the salesy pitches. This challenge is about building genuine high value connections. And here's a promise I have for you. With a commitment of just one to two hours a day for five days, you're gonna witness transformative results. On day one, you'll learn how to craft a business strategy without cold emails or paying to speak. Day two is all about you redefining your profile to attract decision makers ready to invest in your expertise. By day three, you'll have your very own five-figure sales system to turn contacts into clients. By day four, we will have you automating your funnel with proven templates and scripts. And day five, I'm gonna teach you how to master the art of discovery calls with a step-by-step -step checklist and exclusive five-figure sell secrets. Whether you're just stepping onto the speaking scene or you're a seasoned pro, this challenge is tailored made for you. And I'm gonna teach you the exact strategies that have helped me help my clients make over $2 million in the last two years. The journey to a thriving five-figure speaking and consulting business begins with this challenge. So are you ready to redefine your limits? accelerate your growth and bask in the limelight of your success. I want you to join the five days to five figure speaking challenge. Now let's rewrite your success story together. Simply head over to speakingforprofit.com. You're going to click that button that says five days to five figure speaking gigs. So you can get started with the challenge. Can't wait to see you there. All right. Now back to the show. Well, let's get back into our strategies, right? That was my soapbox. Hope that that was helpful for some folks who are maybe wondering, like, this is great information evolved, but I need strategy. I need a roadmap on how to get there. I want to make $100,000. I want to make at least an additional $50,000 next year for my speaking consulting business. How can I do that? The best way for you to do that is to join us at the challenge. So let's get into our next negotiation and strategy tip for speakers and consultants. The next thing is that you want to make sure that you offer a customized package. So many times I see speakers and consultants who just do the same thing over and over again. And what I want to say about this is I do believe in that aspect of the business as well. I actually call it the Beyonce method, right? You create a speech one time, you don't write it again, you deliver it to a bunch of different people. But what I want to say about this is even though you might write a speech, you might put together a presentation one time, it's always going to be different because you're going to be different. Your audience is different. So there needs to be some type of customization. 
So instead of having this one size fits all approach, create a tiered service packages with different levels of engagement and pricing. The way that I have that set up in my business is that if an organization needs support that's more supportive of a larger group that can't get together at one time, I have some digital products and some licensed courses that I can share with them, and that's at one tier. If an organization wants to bring me in just for one speaking engagement or one training or development, I have a tier for that. If an organization wants to bring me in a little bit longer and maybe work with me for a few months, or maybe they want to work with me in a way where we can be put on a retainer to support them, then that's a different tier. So having these various tiers of ways that people can support you allows you to customize the approach based off of the client's budget. And what the way I think about it, y'all, is if you're paying more, you're usually paying for more access to me. I always tell my clients this. This is why I had to start charging people. Whether you meet me in an elevator or you meet me at an event and you ask me a particular question, I'm going to give you the same answer because I'm not a person that's like, oh, this person's not paying me. I don't want to be in an active service and I don't want to support them. No matter who it is, I want to be supportive and be in an active service. But in order to protect my time and my energy, the more access that you get to me, the price goes up. So maybe someone who purchases a digital product doesn't have to pay as much because I don't have to show up. I don't have to get up. I don't have to be there. A person who only pays to be in space with me one time wouldn't pay as much as a person who's paying for me to show up five times. So really make your tiered approach and your customized packages about the amount of access to you, not about the information. Always over deliver, always give the information that your client's going to need. But as they ask of more access to you, you can increase your price. And this gives you the flexibility in your offers so that you're able to support people with different budgets and different requirements. So we went through the first three strategies, y'all, right? The first one was understanding your value and your unique selling proposition. The second one was to research the client and the vent. And the third one was to offer customized packages. Now let's get into the fourth one. When you're in negotiation with a potential organization or decision maker, it's really important that you're able to showcase the return on investment. The ROI is what we call it, right? Clients are more likely to agree to your perms if they can see the clear benefits. And this is why I love to put together a proposal that really shows up for the client as a roadmap. I have clients who want to work with me on a monthly basis. Some people want to work with me for four months to get a particular project done. And in order to be not only an amazing speaker and consultant, I'm really a project manager I've got to put together some phases and a roadmap that showcase how are they going to get their ROI. And many of us think that a return in investment is all about pricing. When a return in investment can really be about the organizational objectives that they want to be able to hit. Maybe they wanted to collect data that they haven't collected before. Maybe they want feedback for their annual report. Whatever it is. So that's why it's so important that you have clear understanding of what the client needs and what their objectives are so to get the return of investment. So, for example, let's say you're doing a keynote presentation, a motivational speech, maybe for a college graduation, and you want to be able to support an organization. And they say our theme is that we want to motivate our students to give back and to be amazing alumni. Maybe during your presentation, you not only talk about stories of being a great alumni, but you literally give them the information to fill out at that event so that they can start being a part of the alumni before they even leave it. And then afterward, you follow up with the organization and say, hey, how many folks signed up for the, from the event to be a part of the alumni association? Right, Being really clear in that return in investment for the organization so that not only that they feel like you you supported them, but they want to hire you back because they know that you're going to perform and you're going to show up in a way that's going to enhance whatever they need. You can also do this in your negotiation by making sure that you showcase testimonials and case studies when you've done that. So one of the things that I really think are so important, y'all, when you are a speaker and a consultant is to make sure that you're getting testimonials from organizations that really love your work. 
And I always suggest trying to get that within 24 to 48 hours after your speech, because after that, people get really busy. So taking those testimonials and putting them in your proposals so that people can see that you have a track record of really helping people get their ROI. And lastly, right, this is, a, this is my last negotiation tip and strategy for speakers and consultants to be able to secure not just a bag, but big bags. And this one might be a little bit more challenging for y'all, but I want to say it because we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect ourselves and our businesses. So the, the last thing is to be ready to walk away, y'all. It's a powerful position in negotiation. If your potential client is not able to meet your minimum requirements, meaning they can't pay you, maybe they can't pay for your accommodations, be prepared to politely decline them, right? This is not only about you and your product value, but sometimes the lead will reconsider to meet your terms. I have several clients that I've worked with who have said, you know, total organization, this is not enough compensation for what you're asking for. I can't do it. And the organization will go back and find the budget to do it. Or they'll come back later on and say, hey, you know what? We really wanted to work with you. We were able to find some funding to be able to do it. So don't feel like just because an organization says they don't have it, that you have to say yes. The power of this business is that you have the ability, the clarity, and the independence to say no and politely decline. And you don't have to be rude about it. Just say, hey, you know, this doesn't fit into my compensation model. This doesn't work for me. Just politely decline the opportunity because one, you're protecting your own business and your own value as a speaker and a consultant, but two, you are impacting the field. Other speakers and consultants who want to work with this organization, if they have a similar rate, the organization will know that that's the rate and they'll find the money and find the budget. But if we have a lot of speakers and consultants who continue to take rates that don't allow you to really live and thrive and are like three, four, five hundred dollars that's not going to really help the business as a speaking industry in general. And especially my folks who are doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work, there's so much emotional labor that goes into that. So we don't want to continue to burn ourselves out just because we have an opportunity. A delay is not a denial. And as soon as one door closes, the opportunity for another one opens. Quite often what we're doing is we're holding up the door to open from our own abundance because we're busy saying yes to things that are below what we can actually do. And what happens when you're underpaid? You underdeliver. When you're underpaid, you underdeliver. So that affects your whole business. That affects the testimonials that you get, the referrals that you get. So if a client cannot meet your minimum requirements, it is okay to politely decline. I want to review these five strategies for you one more time. And I want to thank you for ut utilizing your most valuable resource with me today, which is your time for being here and for learning with me. So the first way, right, for you to negotiate and have a strategy, right? First negotiation tips and strategies for speakers and consultants is one, I want you to understand your value and your unique selling proposition. What makes you unique? Number two, research the client and the event. Most of these events have happened before. Do your research before you even get in negotiation conversation. Have something set up on your Calendly or your Acuity or whatever you have set up to ask questions about budget. Always offer, offer a customized package so that you don't have something that's one size fits all. You don't have something that's one size fits all. Have a tiered approach so that you're able to support people who might have a lower budget or who might have a higher budget. Emphasize the return and investment, your ROI, when you're speaking to the client and always be ready to walk away if folks cannot meet your minimum requirements with working with you. So I hope that this has been helpful. What I want to shout out again is that on December 11th, we are hosting the five days to five figure speaking gigs challenge. If you want to come through, learn to monetize your message and get prepared for 2024, the first quarter of the year is what I call the money time, y'all. We have so many amazing events that are going to be happening around Black History Month, MLK Day, Women's History Month. So you getting out there and organizations knowing about you is really important. And don't think just because we're in December, you can't get no opportunities for the top of the year. There's still some opportunities that are there, but you've got to put together a strategy and a roadmap. And I want to support you to do that. 
So if you want more support and you want to be there, the five-day challenge is starting December 11th, and you can go on and get enrolled at speakingforprofit.com slash five-day challenge. Attention public speakers, coaches, and consultants. Ever dreamt of booking five-figure speaking and consulting contracts? In just five days, I'm teaching my tried and tested system to elevate your speaking and consulting business. Forget the cold emails, bypass the salesy pitches. This challenge is about building genuine high value connections. And here's a promise I have for you. With a commitment of just one to two hours a day for five days, you're gonna witness transformative results. On day one, you'll learn how to craft a business strategy without cold emails or paying to speak. Day two is all about you redefining your profile to attract decision makers ready to invest in your expertise. By day three, you'll have your very own five-figure sales system to turn contacts into clients. By day four, we will have you automating your funnel with proven templates and scripts. And day five, I'm gonna teach you how to master the art of discovery calls with a step-by-step -step checklist and exclusive five-figure sales secrets. Whether you're just stepping onto the speaking scene or you're a seasoned pro, this challenge is tailored made for you. And I'm gonna teach you the exact strategies that have helped me help my clients make over $2 million in the last two years. The journey to a thriving five-figure speaking and consulting business begins with this challenge. So are you ready to redefine your limits? accelerate your growth, and bask in the limelight of your success. I want you to join the five days to five figure speaking challenge now. Let's rewrite your success story together. Simply head over to speakingforprofit.com. You're going to click that button that says five days to five figure speaking gigs so you can get started with the challenge. Can't wait to see you there. All right, now back to the show. So I hope these tips were helpful for y'all so that you're able to elevate and negotiate. When you go into a negotiation room, I'll give you one more pro tip before I head out and grab, grab some lunch. When you're going into a negotiation room, the other thing that I would suggest is that you put on some good music, the music that makes you feel abundant and makes you feel like you're full of luxury. You go on and put that on before you even go into that negotiation room because your confidence and your energy is going to read to your actual potential client. And they want to read you as confident and happy and abundant. So you're going to put on some music, you dance it out, and you prepare to secure that bag because it's already yours if you're walking into a discovery call to talk about negotiations in the first place. So I hope this was helpful for you. I can't wait until we come together again to do some other amazing training and information. And I hope you have an amazing week. Until next time, peace.